A child murdered, a man accused, and a world that demanded vengeance. Bruno Richard, help me. This is all a mistake. What has he just done? Please, tell me what has he done? Now, do you identify the guy or don't you? I can't be sure. Tell him he's under suspicion as an accessory. Nothing to do with the Lindenberg baby, I swear, nothing. I've never lied to you, never. The night the baby was took, I was sleeping. We provide $35 a day. Sitting right there. Bruno Richard Hauptman. Liar! He didn't murder the Lindbergh baby. Hauptman is innocent. A whole lot of people are guilty. Who really kidnapped the Lindbergh baby? It is 60 years since the controversial execution of Bruno Richard Hauptman for the kidnap and murder of the Lindbergh baby. Today, director Mark Rydell painstakingly recreates an event that transfixed the entire world in the HBO original movie, Crime of the Century, starring Stephen Ray and Isabella Rossellini, and examines the questions that still fire a raging debate. Have we killed a man that was innocent? This material is gonna provide information that has been suppressed for uh, 60 years. The miscarriage of justice revealed in Crime of the Century is based on historical evidence, trial transcripts, and the book The Airman and the Carpenter by Sir Ludovic Kennedy, who investigated the case in response to a television interview of Hauptmann's wife, Anna, in 1981. I suddenly came across an elderly German woman telling her interviewer that her husband was innocent of a crime for which he'd been convicted and electrocuted. I don't know who did it. But I know Richard didn't. He had absolutely nothing to do, and he told the truth. I said to myself, this woman would not come up at the age of 83, which she was then, to say her husband was innocent of a crime which had happened 50 years before. And her conviction is so great that she can't be pretending. He felt it. He felt that uh, this woman was telling the truth. And under the Freedom of Information Act, he was accorded not only the trial records, but the police records and other files that had heretofore been suppressed. Well, I did a tremendous amount of research, and the thing that struck me more than anything was that there uh, wasn't a single piece of evidence against Hauptmann which was not invented. It had all been planted, it had all been fixed. A message that shocked the world comes in on the police teletype. A message that stunned the imagination. 20 months old son of the lone eagle and his mate. The victim of as cruel and fiendish a crime as any human can be guilty of. The crime was committed by means of a ladder placed against the house. The baby was stolen, dressed in his little sleeping suit by two men and a woman, we believe. The kidnapper wore heavy woolen socks to disguise his footprints, but the search goes on just the same. It's the greatest manhunt in history, a search for a child. Lindbergh became America's number one hero in the 1920s because of this extraordinarily epic flight he made from New York to Paris. The first time the Atlantic had been crossed by a single aviator. It was an incredible feat to do. That solo flight across the Atlantic uh, captured uh, the imagination of the entire world and as a result the kidnapping and murder of his child was enormous news. Lindbergh had been such a major American figure that the fact that his child had been kidnapped and murdered was an affront to the American sense of, it, of itself. The press was very vicious in its attacks on the police and the state governments of New York and New Jersey for their failure to apprehend the Lindbergh kidnapper. Come on, Colonel, help us out. What's the police? What here? It's too early, fellas. It's too early, okay? And when they found finally a, someone who they could pin it on, they were rabid in their efforts. There's a, a public need for atonement. They couldn't find the real criminal, so they had to find one, so it had to be Richard Hauptmann. The New York Daily News, the day after Hauptmann's arrest, they printed a headline, banner headline, which said, Lindbergh kidnapper jailed. There was no proof. Uh, there was no innocent until proven guilty. He was a guilty man who the press stirred the American and international public into a frenzy. What would you do if you were a policeman? Two years into it, when everyone's screaming, what's the matter with the police? They're all jerks. They can't do anything. They can't do anything. And here comes this thing, ransom money, tied directly to the kidnapping, with the guy at the other end of it. You're in a lot of trouble, aren't you, Bruno?
Norman Schwarzkopf, who was uh, General Norman Schwarzkopf's father, was the chief of the state police, and he was determined to uh, execute Hauptmann. He thought Hauptmann guilty. Well, he's a policeman, and he pursues clues. And they had a big clue, which is $14,000 of ransom money. And that doesn't hang out idly, you know, by accident in somebody's garage buried in a can that they have to tear the garage apart to get to it. He doesn't think Hoffman wrote the ransom notes. Get him to write with the other hand. Yes, sir. Okay, now, ready. R-E-D-Y. I know how to spell better than that. Just write it. What the police did was offer it, offer it as proof that he must have written the ransom notes. I mean, it was a wicked thing to do, but that's what they did. That's what, that's what Willens did, the chief prosecutor. He knew perfectly well uh, the circumstances under which they'd been written. If this man were freed, now that would be the real crime of the century. He really had it in for Houtman and uh, really was sort of personally involved and personally wanted to see that Houtman was convicted and, and executed. He gets embroiled in attacking Houtman. And he's uh, hooked up with Schwarzkopf, and they want me to help him out. <laughs> My character is Harold Hawk. He's the governor of New Jersey. And as the movie goes on, of course, uh, there's a lot of lies being told. And I say, we can't do this anymore. I want justice, and I shouldn't be begging for it from a police officer and the attorney general. All right, easy now, Harold. And they say, yes, we can. The press is going to ask, why is Mr. Hoffman defending a baby killer? And the voters, Harold, well, they're not going to like it. I'd go so far as to say that the only vote that you would ever get would be the vote of Richard Hauptman. Except Richard Hauptman won't be around to vote, now will he? It was like a nightmare. I just couldn't believe it, that, uh, that people would do anything, that people would go and swear on the Bible to tell the truth, and then, and then they go up and, and, and lie, and they know, some of them, they know they were lying. They knew they were lying. The media made this trial a circus. There were 10,000 people in the streets waiting for the verdict in a small town of Flemington, New Jersey. The courtroom was full, full. I mean, there were, there were, there were some 600 people or so in a courtroom that was designed for 300. Uh, they were standing on the windows. We saw an example of this recently. I'm, I'm sure everybody is going to be reminded of, of the O.J. Simpson trial and the... Um, the subsequent circus that it created. This was infinitely larger, in spite of the fact that there was no television. There were hundreds of reporters, and thousands of newspapers being fed, and it was not only a national event, it was an international event because of Lindbergh. There were little miniature ladders being sold by people in the street, and some other chap was, was selling what he called locks of baby Lindbergh's hair. And God knows where that came from. I would like you to be part of this, this riotous crowd that's pursuing Anna Hauptman and uh, yelling at her and making her life what you think it deserves, as miserable as it could be. They were considered monster, and she was considered an idiot for being with a monster and keeping his defense. Anna Hauptman always believed her husband was innocent. I'm positively sure that my husband had nothing to do with the Lindbergh baby kidnapping. They had a very deep and connected relationship. They were very much in love with each other. They had a child that they both adored. Mark is showing us that side of this case that the public, the police, the authorities never knew about. Truth will come out, and we have to believe that. I will always believe you, my love. Always. Meanwhile, poor Hauptmann had to sit in his cell, hearing the crowd shouting, kill Hauptmann, kill the German, let him burn. And he was reduced to sitting on his bed weeping, weeping with the frustration of knowing that nobody was going to believe him, and in the end that he was going to the electric chair. The amount of press was, was shocking. They lived in this court building. The, the, the amount of wires that came out of the Flemington courthouse is inconceivable.
I think even when you look at the newsreel footage of Orlens, I mean, he was very much playing to the media and, and trying the case in the press. The case is proceeding much more rapidly than anticipated by the prosecution. And we're satisfied with its progress. David Paymer was photographed from low angles when he was swooping down on the jury and swooping down on Hauptmann and doing his summation to emphasize the viciousness with which he was, uh, Hauptmann was prosecuted. You have sworn to God that you will tell the truth and you are telling lies. I'm not telling lies. Didn't you lie on the road? For time and time again, didn't you? I did not. You are telling lies! All of you! I never see this man before! He tells a lie! And that man, he lies! And that man, he lies! Oberst Lindenberg, shame, sir, Shanda! Silence! Don't tell me a lie. All right, sir, all right. When you were arrested with this Lindenberg ransom money, you had a $20 bill. Did the police ask you where you got it? Yes. Did you lie to them or did you tell them the truth? Did you tell them the truth or did you lie? I, I said nothing to them. You lied, didn't you? Yes the circus atmosphere that was going on at the trial and it it did it took on a momentum of its own and Houtman just was crushed by it. Flash, United Press, Trenton, Hoffman executed, 847 and one half. As to who did the kidnapping, I don't think we'll ever know now. It's a very great mystery, very great mystery, but it wasn't Hauptmann. I feel a great sense of responsibility to the memory of Richard Hartman because he was so badly treated. People think the crime of the century is the Lindbergh kidnapping. No, the crime of the century was the execution of Bruno Richard Hartman for our own souls. We can't go on like this with half truths in it and with the idea that the federal government can get away or the press can get away with it. If the jurisdiction in this country is kind of rough on the ordinary immigrant, then what's left of the country you know that's what it's based on is people coming to this country with hope and they kind of dashed his hope there's never an end to this story as he said you know he wrote he wrote a long article before he died it was published after he died where he said you think by killing me that the book will be closed but the book will never be closed but he's right about that Catch the premiere of Crime of the Century tonight at 8 on HBO.